Hello, best of your listeners, and welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. I'm Theo Hicks, and today we'll be speaking with Jimmy Johnner. Jimmy, how are you doing today? Doing great, Theo. Thanks for having me on board. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. So a little bit about Jimmy. He is the owner and operator of a marine infrastructure company and is also a full is also works full time with a commercial general contractor and developer. He has five years of real estate investing experience and his portfolio consists of 66 units as well as a nine unit salon suite development. He is based in Beaufort, North Carolina, and you can say hi to him at his LinkedIn profile. Um, so his name is Jimmy, just J-I-M-M-Y, and then Johnner, J-O-H-N-E-R. And if you're watching the video, when you look him up, you'll see his, his face and know that, know that it is his profile. Uh, so Jimmy, do you mind telling us some more about your background and what you're focused on today? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thanks for the, the description of my last name there, spelling it out. People tend to botch that up quite a bit. But um, but yeah, the uh, so uh, as you said, I own a marine infrastructure company. I'm kind of all things business, um, kind of been on the entrepreneur bone for the majority of my life. Um, the marine infrastructure company consumes quite a bit of my time right now. And then obviously do as much uh, real estate investing as I can. Um, we try to pour as much money into the real estate as we as we can from the other businesses. Um, I guess looking in, into my background, I went to a maritime academy after high school um, and just dove into uh, dove into the shipping industry, kind of traveled all over the world and, and got the travel bug out. Uh, still do quite a bit of it now. And um, just always wanted more and, and real estate was kind of the path I decided to take uh, to kind of continue to grow. Um, so right now our main focus is um, multifamily. Uh, we try to find some value add value add deals in the eastern part of North Carolina around the Raleigh market and east. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we've got a couple contracts or a couple deals under contract right now, another 46 unit um, property right outside of Raleigh that we're hoping to close on late October and um, steady hunting some more uh, down, down south. So I'm actually in Louisiana right now um, outside of New Orleans on a self storage project that we're under development on. So all over the place, wide open. Awesome. So you said that you, you spent a lot of your time with the Marine infrastructure company. So right now you're doing something like right now, like what we're interviewing, you're, you're doing something for, for your real estate business, right? Or is, is, is or is you doing something well, for your Marine infrastructure for the general contractor that I work for? So I work for a, I work full time for a, um, a pretty good size uh, commercial developer slash contractor. We, we work all over the, all over the country doing new development deals. I mainly do storage. So we do class A self storage developments. Um, so from the ground up uh, three to five story, 120,000 square foot buildings. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so right now I'm actually out of town for the company that I work for full time. Right. Wimco. Right. Well, so so when do you work uh, when do you when do you work on your on your real estate business is it on weekends and at, at night in the morning yeah kind of well all, all the time i mean my my partner um my partner in crime with all this stuff his name's alan uh we kind of tag team a lot of stuff uh, a lot of late nights and, and and mainly weekend work um but you know with the power of the cell phone we're able to do quite a bit remotely and it, it you know given today's climate with remote working it's kind of a no-brainer that we're able to uh, hunt deals and, and delegate different things to different people on our team and and continue to find find deals and, and place capital. So. so you have 66 units right now. Um, what's the breakdown of that? Is it just one building or is it 66 single families or somewhere in between? No, 66 apartment units. So we, we own two different two different properties. One's an 18 unit um, and then the other one's a 48 um, consisting of Seven, seven different buildings, but it's two different properties. Perfect. And then um, how are you, uh, how did you fund those, those deals? So the, uh, we, we, we raised, you know, OPM, other people's money, um, ra raised money for the first one, just through connections and networking with people that I know that, that had some liquidity and, and were interested in the real estate realm. Um, a lot of them were kind of neck deep in single family homes and we've tried to transition some of their focus uh, because they do have the capital available to, to get on board with us with multifamily and kind of leverage our, our knowledge with that, 
with that sector of the real estate industry and their capital and kind of make it a win-win partnership or, or a no lose, no lose, as I like to say it. So, um, and then, so that was for the 18 unit. It was people that you already knew that, that invested. Yeah, well, and as well for the 48. So we, we actually have the same equity partner on both of those deals. Um, and it's kind of been a, a dream come true for lack of a, of, of a better word. It, it, it kind of came easy once we, once we put the work in place and, he felt comfortable with what we were doing. Um, it was actually pretty simple to raise the money, to be honest with you. It wasn't, wasn't too much effort on our part. And uh, just finding it and putting it all together and making it work was the, was the real task. So. so you have one guy that invested in the 18 unit and the, and the same person that invested in the 48 unit for all of it? All of it. All right. Can you mind telling us uh, some, some background on that? Who this person is? I mean, not, obviously not their name, but... Like, yeah, how did yeah. you, how did you meet them? How long did you know them? How did this, how did the, um, how did you bring up, you know, the, the, the concept of inv them investing in your deals and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. Great, great question. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave him somewhat private cause that's how he tends to stay. But so through it's, it's all through the power of networking, you know, so we, we, me and my partner and I know people all over the country through the construction industry that we work in. And um, we've known this guy for a long time, probably five or six years or so, and uh, knew he was interested in real estate. He owns a ton of single family homes. And um, we just bounced it off of him and asked him if he knew anybody that might be interested and he raised his hand. So it was kind of the, the, typical, um, the typical approach, asking somebody that you know that's got the liquidity, if they happen to know anybody that might be interested, hoping that they're the ones that say, yes, I'm interested. And, um, you know, from, from there, we just continue to uh, leverage that relationship is really all it, all it comes down to. And he trusts us and we trust him and we, we were able to make the deal work. So my partner and I have, have come pretty, pretty little out of pocket. Um, but we put all the upfront effort and all the operational stuff in play, which again, makes it a, a great partnership because we can't do it without him and he can't do it without us. So yeah, it makes a great partnership. What, um, so he so this conversation happened and then he invested in the 18 unit and invested in the 48 unit were those are those the only two apartment deals you you've done like was the 18 unit the first deal you and him have done like yourselves personally or had you done deals in the past before already yeah, i've done a few duplex developments and stuff uh in the past and we've done the salon suites development um in the past but the 18 units was the first apartment building we built, or we, excuse me, we bought. And um, yeah, so that was the first time that the, the partnership was formed with the three guys that are in it now. So, okay. Um, other stuff was just me personally. So I, I, I was actually just talking about this with someone else. Um, so I wanted to ask you, how, how beneficial has your has has your your full time job with this commercial general contractor and developer right, being full time in in real estate? Uh, how how beneficial has that been towards your your investing business? Like not 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 at all, or completely invaluable. Without it, you wouldn't be able to do what you were doing, or, or somewhere in between. I mean, I don't know that I'd call it. I wouldn't be able to do it without it, but but it has definitely been. I mean, transformational from a from a networking standpoint and a knowledge basis and a and a literacy concept of, of, of how everything works with real estate from, from land acquisition to building it, to renovating it, to everything. It's just made a, made a tremendous difference. And again, the network, I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. The network that I've developed over the last five years has just been incredible. I mean, I know, I know people all over the country that are neck deep in real estate every single day that I could call and bounce questions off of and so on and so forth. So it's been, it's been invaluable for sure. And, and is that how you met your, your business partner? No, we actually grew up together. Um, he's my, he's one of my best friends. So I've known him since I was 10. So, huh? Interesting. So, <laughs> I mean, a, a lot of people, uh, they'll, they'll give advice and say that you shouldn't partner up with like a family member or a, like someone that you, like a friend that you already know that someone that you already have a pre existing relationship with. So maybe walk us through how, um, you know, your advice for anyone, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's probably the easiest to partner up with someone that you already know, but they say that, uh, you know, eventually things might get, get difficult. So yeah, no, do you wanna I, maybe, maybe, maybe let us know, or give us some of your advice on, on what people need to do in order to, in order to set themselves up for success when partnering with a, 
you know, off someone they have a pre-existing relationship with. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of partnerships. I mean, I think, it, you, you know, you can spread the spread the risk and also spread the the amount of work that it takes up front and on the back end to take to take massive action on getting stuff done, which is which is a huge part of getting stuff done. It's just taking action. Quit thinking about it and just do it. But um, I would say that uh, any good partnership is you, you, you both have to have one another. If it's if it's one sided where you don't really have to have the other person to do one thing or another. And it's not a no lose, no lose situation. I mean, I think that's key. And you do have to be careful with friends and family, um, especially when it comes to money uh, with any type of partnership. But up front, Alan, I just, we, we put together an operating agreement with an LLC, just like you would with anybody. Um, and I trust him with my bank account and he trusts me with his and I can't do it without him and he can't do it without me. So that's the, again, that's the value of an of a awesome partnership is not being able to do it without the other person. And uh, knowing your boundaries with them and knowing, knowing what they're comfortable with and knowing what they're not comfortable with and, and having an open dialogue with that is really the, the, the key, I think, to moving forward with it. You said, uh, what's, what was the size of the deal you said you're working on right now? You said a, a 42 unit? The 46. 46 yeah. unit? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, one, I think it's a one three purchase price. Um, so we're getting it, getting it at a pretty deep discount. Um, Going along with uh, about a, almost a million dollar renovation on the back end, so about a about a two year turnaround for our investors on money and so on and so forth. And I can get into the weeds and that stuff if you want. So, uh, yeah. So I I, I have to ask um, how you how you found the deal, and then I'm assuming that the same individual who invested in the previous two deals is investing again. So maybe tell us what what that structure is going to be. So it sounds like this is going to be a pretty, pretty heavy value of um, um, value add deal. Yeah. Pretty heavy value add deal. Um, the way we, I guess the way we, we found it with uh, it's an off market deal. We found it through, it's a pocket listing through a broker that I know. Um, he brought it to us just cause you know, again, that network, we knew we could close. So he brought it to us, um, negotiated it with directly with the, uh, the seller and the broker. Uh, via Zoom, just like this, and uh, went under contract about a month ago on it, and we're just heavy into the due diligence right now. And um, like I said, planning to close late this month, early October. And uh, we'll fund it through some, we'll get some bridge debt uh, in, in place for the acquisition, um, refi it after 24 months or so, get into some agency debt on it and pay our investors back. and. Um, roll all the refi proceeds into another deal that we hopefully find between now and then. So, um, so, 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 um, so, so, so this is more of a, um, so your investors will invest up front, and then when you give them the money back, are they still, are they still in the deal? Like, are they, or, or, or is, are they just kind of putting that money up front so you can stabilize it and then they get their money back plus some sort of profit and then they're out. Yeah. Great, great, great question. And there's a million different ways to skin a cat. And I, 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 that's one of the first things people always ask me. So from an equity standpoint, the way we structure a partnership, we don't, we don't like to label ourselves as syndicators just because we, uh, we really like the word partnership when it comes to SEC regulations, so on and so forth. So being an active partner makes a big difference. It's less paperwork. There's less soft costs up front with security attorneys, so on and so forth. But um, the way that it works, the way that it's working on this one, we've got three partners. It's me, myself, or myself, my partner, Alan, and then our other equity partner that's going in on the deal. Um, he'll own 33% of the deal, just like he does on the other two. Um, and we're all raising the money together from within the three partners. Um, we're not raising it from anybody else outside of the partnerships. So all the money that's coming in is, is, is ours. So we'll, at, at refi, we'll all get our money back. Um, and then, like I said, roll it over into another deal. So we don't take anything out of any of the properties right now. And that's also the power of me trying to maintain a full-time job along with my partners. They do the same thing. So we don't rely on any of the money that our real estate makes right now. Um, we're just continuing to build the business and uh, we uh, will continue to roll that money for as long as we can until we can say peace out on everything else, you know? So, yeah. So, 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 so you, you'll, you'll buy the deal um, and then, uh, with you know you're, you're all invest you know the money's coming from mostly the equity partner but then you and your business partner also invest mm -hmm. and then you get bridge get bridge debt stabilize it refinance all the investment money that went in there is paid back you know 
equally. You don't get anything extra on top of that. And I'm assuming that the extra equity that you get back from the refi plus all of the cash flow, does that just go into an account that's then used to buy more deals? Or how, did, how does that work? Yeah, and that's a great question as well. There, there's a lot of tax stuff that you got to watch out for. And again, that's the power of having a having a team of, of people that, that know this stuff. They're a heck of a lot smarter than I am um, when it comes to all the tax code. But we'll, we'll that's right. We'll, we'll refinance the deal, roll it over into the same entity, and then it'll it'll get distributed to the partners, quote unquote. But all it does is get rolled over into another bank account with a new entity that buys another deal. So it's all, it's all kind of tax deferred because we're active partners and because we all do take uh, liability in the refi. So again, there's a lot of steps in, in, in the middle, but, but that's kind of the basis of it um, is, is what, what you say. You know, we'll shift the money around, move it from one account to another and then buy another deal with it uh, as a down payment. So. Perfect. All right, Jamie, what is your best real estate investing advice ever? Uh, networking. I'd have to say that's the most important thing in, in my, you know, short lifetime of, of doing this is the, is the power of networking. The, the more people you know and the more people you can bounce questions off of, the more things that tend to, tend to come to you and, and just taking massive action towards that networking. All right, Jimmy, are you ready for the best ever lightning round? Yes, sir. Okay, Jimmy, what is the best ever book you've recently read? So I, I do a lot of reading. Um, and I'd have to say, I don't know if it's the, the, the most recent one, but the seven habits of highly effective people. I'm a, again, I know I've said probably 10 times in this 20 minutes about taking massive action, but um, that's probably my number one, my number one book I've ever read just of, 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 you know, overall mindset and so on and so forth. And close second would be Gail Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people, of course. But if your businesses were to collapse today, so your marine business, you lost your commercial real estate job, and then your multifamily business were to somehow collapse. What would you do next? I would do it all over again. Start from scratch. Okay. Start from scratch. I know how to do it now, so it'll be a heck of a lot easier in a second. Out of all the deals you've done, what has been the best deal, best ever deal? Uh, I'd say that first 18 unit, um, and not ne not necessarily so fi financially speaking, but just from a learning curve perspective, um, that's probably the best deal. I mean, it's what kickstarted my my multifamily mindset on 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 getting rock and rolling with apartments and finding the value in them. Um, we're actually getting ready to refi that deal right now, and it's helping buy the 46 unit. So it it works. Mm -hmm. I'd say that deal is probably my best one. Have you, if, if, if you've lost money on a deal before, how much did you lose and, and what lesson did you learn? Um, I haven't, I've never, knock on wood, I haven't lost deal and I haven't lost money on a deal in real estate. Um, I've broken even and come close, but haven't lost money. Um, now I have elsewhere on, on jobs and so on and so forth. And it's just knowing your numbers is the most important thing and, and not faking a performa, you know, wh whether it's real estate or any business, you know, I mean, it, just not, not faking your performers and making the numbers work, um, but actually running a real performer and making sure that you know every little detail. What is the best ever way you like to give back? Um, I like to employ people. That's my number one thing. And I know that kind of sounds, uh, that's not really giving back, but you know, there's no free lunch. I like to say that. Um, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoy keeping people employed and, providing them a, a place to work, come to work every day and, and with a positive environment and, and having, having ownership in, in what they're doing every day and, and enjoying where they work. So that's my form of giving back. And then lastly, what is the best ever place to reach you? Um, I'd say through LinkedIn. Um, it's probably the, the, the quickest and easiest way to get a hold of me. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, but um, and all my handles are the same. It's James Johner or Jimmy Johner. So. Perfect, Jamie. Well, thanks for, for joining us and walking us through your real estate journey as well as your best ever advice. Uh, some of the, at least the biggest takeaways that I got was number one, um, and I actually, I actually talk about this a lot, is that if you, a really good way to get started in, in real estate, um, if you don't have the money to buy deals yourself, is to just get a full-time job in real estate because 
of the, the massive benefits you'll get, as you mentioned, from, from networking and then from, from knowledge. And so for, for, for your business, you're able to find your, your equity partner through, through this networking um, and then the, the knowledge and the literacy that comes from working in real estate gives you a, a leg up when you're first getting started unless you skip a lot of the kind of minor mistakes that people uh, usually make because they don't really know no, they don't really know because they've never, they've never done it before. So it allows you to do it without having your own skin in the game, in a sense. Um, yeah, you, you also talked about um, your, and the other thing was your was your was your strategy. I also really like that too, where you bought you, we've got your equity partner. You don't do a syndication. You do you do the joint venture, so everyone's active. Um, and then you all invest. You'll invest. You'll do value add deals. Um, the, the, the three business partners will invest money in the deal. And then once the deal is stabilized and you refinance rather than, you know, each of you cashing out and taking the cash and doing whatever you want to with it, that money, you know, you said it was, it was, uh, it, there's some things you need to need some pro processes you need to follow, but, uh, you know, um, high level, the money is rolled into another deal. So the, all the cash flow, all the refinance proceeds, all that stuff goes to you and then goes into their account that's used to, to buy other deals. And then you are living off of your full, your full time income. And ultimately the goal is to do enough of these deals where you have enough cash flow coming in so that that replaces your, your full time income. So a more longer term um, perspective. Uh, and I think that's, you know, I, I, I really like that, that strategy. So thank you for, for, for sharing that. Um, one thing I, I forgot to mention about the, uh, the networking part was uh, not only did it allow you to find your partner, um, sorry, your, your equity partner, the knowledge, but you also got the deal you're working on now from a broker who, um, who knows that you're able to, to close on deals uh, that you got through that, that network. So Jimmy, thank you for, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Best ever listeners, as always, thank you for listening. Have a best ever day and we will talk to you tomorrow.